Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So we have a very interesting video that we're going to watch together made by One Sharp Sports, who has claimed that Texas football has made a mistake in starting Quinn Ewers and that this will not end well, per his words, for Texas football based upon the decision to start Quinn Ewers as he not only criticized the player, but also Texas and all of the, the aspects that went into the decision by one Steve Sarkeesian to start Quinn Ewers over Hudson Card. And I wanted to really dive into this because the eight minute video that Sharp Sports put out was just so all over the place and, and full of misinformation, full of, quite frankly, some dis disingenuous statements based upon previous content made by Sharp Sports regarding Quinn Ewers. So we're going to address some of those things. And look, I'm not here to get personal with anybody. This is strictly talking ball, talking college football here with Sharp Sports. I do not know him personally. I do, don't know you personally, Sharp Sports. Uh, but we, we will be addressing you today, brother, because uh, you were way off base with your comments. You said uh, this message was for Texas fans. So Texas fans are here now. We've pulled up and we want to talk, right? We want to have a discourse with you. Now, before we get to that, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe, like Sharp Sports. We are here to grow our platform and, and produce content for you guys. But here on my channel, we're going to be honest and, and make sure we deep dive into these things. We're allowed to be wrong. We're allowed to have our own opinions. We're allowed to speak on what we want to speak on. But we're going to use data. We're going to, you know, be respectful and, and, and actually have proof of things if we want to claim something or have a reasoning for how we got to said point. Uh, so that's going to be the exercise today as we watch this video together. But I appreciate it if you like and subscribe on the video. It really helps us out. Also, thank you to our sponsor, BUSR. BUSR.com slash Fanatic, the official sponsor, the official sportsbook, the official betting partner of Fanatic Perspective. Use that Sports 100 FP promo code. Take advantage. 100% free play match on all initial deposits. We have football coming this weekend, college football coming this weekend. We have NFL right around the corner. I am looking to take advantage. So many of my Cowboys fans out there, we have Cowboys bucks coming up week one. What better place to put forth the bets you were going to put up with BUSR, amazing customer service, 24-7 support tap in. So I'm not going to waste too much time here. We're going to jump right into this video made by Sharp Sports. This is not going to win in well for Texas football regarding Quinn Ewers. Let's dive in. The Longhorns have officially announced that Quinn Ewers will be the starting quarterback heading into next year. And this means that the Texas is going to have another year of mediocrity. I am letting every single Texas Longhorn fan and anybody who is interested in Quinn Ewers, I'm letting you guys all know he is not the quarterback that everybody seems to have him painted as. Quinn Ewers is the direct result of what happens when you try and have lightning strike twice. Ever since Patrick Mahomes turned himself from an unknown three-star quarterback into the Super Bowl winning MVP quarterback that we see now, Every single team has just tried to find some big armed, big arm talented quarterback that can make every single throw. What's wrong with finding a big arm quarterback to make every single throw? What are you talking about, Sharp Sports? And why are you comparing a finished product in Patrick Mahomes after he's been in the NFL under Andy Reid, sat for a year, won MVP, gotten paid record money, won a Super Bowl? Why are you comparing a finished product? to a 19-year-old Quinn Ewers who's getting ready to embark on his journey, beginning of his college journey as a quarterback at Texas. I, I don't understand this. Yes, their skill set, you know, trait-wise is comparable, and, and we've seen that on film. So I'm not, I don't understand the confusion there. As well as Patrick Mahomes is a three-star recruit going to Texas Tech, I think that would be more apt comparison to compare – where Mahomes was at that time versus where Quinn Ewers is right now. And considering, you know, we're not starting a big arm three-star 
project. We're starting a highly touted five-star player that's on the same accord as a Trevor Lawrence and a Justin Fields and, you know, all the pick your top rated quarterback prospect coming out of high school. Like that's, that's what we're dealing with here. So I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm already losing you in terms of why you're upset about the Mahomes comp, but let's let's dive in. The problem is, is Patrick Mahomes is more than just a big arm. Because you see, while Patrick yeah. Mahomes might have one of the greatest arm talents that we've ever seen hands down in mm -hmm. the NFL, he also has a great understanding of the offense there in Kansas City. And he does a pretty good job of controlling the football, and you don't really see him throwing a ton of picks year in and year Okay, yeah, he does have a good understanding. He doesn't throw a whole bunch of picks year in, year out. That's after time in the NFL with Andy Reid. Coaching and context matters, brother. Where was, you know, did, did did people feel this way about Patrick Mahomes at Texas Tech? We we know he was a first-round pick, but he was a first-round pick because of his talent and his ability as a playmaker and what he could be and the potential. Yeah, he put up hella numbers at Texas Tech under Cliff Kingsbury. That, I'm not here to dispute that, but let's not act like ball security was, you know, his strong suit or reading defenses was a strong suit. Patrick Mahomes is on record saying he didn't even know how to identify a mic until he got to Kansas City. So let alone, I mean, if you can't do that, you know, what coverages was he really apt at reading, you know, in terms of how, the, you know, the manner in which you're criticizing Quinn Ewers. Matter of fact, Quinn Ewers, all we have to go on is South Lake Carroll. He didn't play at Ohio State last year. I'm sure you know that. So we're looking at a 73 touchdown to eight interception touchdown to interception ratio i'd say that's pretty good for a quarterback and granted yes it's at the high school level but that's the you know that's the data we have right now so um we would anticipate yeah there's going to be some growing pains and probable turnovers just out of youth and inexperience and things he hasn't seen before but to make this leap that this is a bad move and the whole season demise is going to be on his shoulders because we decided to start him over hudson card we are reaching Oh. But nobody ever focuses on that. Everybody People only focuses it on, on the big arm. And I'm letting everybody no. know right now, the fact that Steve Sarkeesian and the Texas Longhorns have chosen to go with Quinn Ewers over Hudson Card, who clearly, very, very clearly was playing way better than Quinn Ewers was, I'm telling y'all. That's news to me. I, I, and I cover Texas on this channel. That is news to me that Hudson Card was clearly way better performing, outperforming Quinn Ewers. So Sharp Sports here um, with breaking news, right? Or this is just flat out cap. And I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but from everything I've seen with my own two eyes through the spring, through the fall, also Steve Sarkeesian, who is the sole decision maker of this and everything we've read behind closed doors, the quarterback competition has at least been close. Whether you want to give a slight edge to Quinn for his playmaking ability, or you want to give a slight edge to Hudson for his experience, the overall situation has been close. The head coach decided to go with the guy who has a better skill set fit for the offense. He wants to run the younger guy with the higher ceiling because it was close. So this whole clearly way better, way ahead, all this type of stuff is absolute nonsense and it's misinformation. It's going to be another rough year. Sarkeesian really backed himself into a corner, investing so much into Quinn Ewers. Yes, Hudson Card didn't do the greatest job for himself last year, not even being able to stay as the team starter throughout the season with Casey Thompson having to come in and be the Texas Longhorn starter for the back half of the year. Right. However, Hudson Card made a ton of progress this offseason and to me at, go back and watch the texas spring game I, i'm t like hudson card through and through any level of the game was playing better than quinn ewers was i mean just last week steve sarkeesian said himself that the difference between hudson card and quinn ewers was not as big as everybody thought and oh my god he, he, so you just contradicted yourself because you just said the the gap or the competition wasn't you know, it was close, according to Steve Sarkeesian, the head coach. So you just said that. But then 30 seconds ago, you just told us in your video that Hudson Carr was playing way better and way ahead of Quinn Ewers. So which one is it, Sharp Sports? 
That's number one. Number two, to suggest that Hudson Carr was better in the spring game at on every you know at every level. Did you watch our spring game? Are you sure you weren't watching Texas State or Houston? Are you sure you were watching the Texas Longhorns? I'm not saying Hudson Carr played poorly. I mean, I I, I agree with you. He was improved. I, I I thought his feet were better, pocket presence overall. I thought he was a little bit more decisive. But to suggest that you know he was flat out across the board better and just dismiss Quinn Ewers' performance there. Um, again, I was there in person. Many Texas fans there. We saw it with our own two eyes. So you know, make sure you 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 watching the the white the right. Uh, clips on on you know where are you getting your 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 film from so everybody was thinking man And you see, this is one of the biggest downfalls that we're going to be seeing in this new NIL era that we are in. When you put this much money behind unproven players and then they don't pan out, you almost feel obligated to just put them in a position that they're not where, where... So, yeah, Quinn Ewers, I guess he didn't pan out at Ohio State. He transferred, but that's an Ohio State problem. What does that have to do with Texas? That's number one. Number two, Quinn Ewers won the job here. Um, so this is a lot of this is TBD, Sharp. Um, and to suggest that NIL was the determining factor in Quinn Ewers being able to start – that would be a valid point if Hudson Card was way ahead, like you inaccurately said earlier, but that was not the case. They were close, and the coach decided to start the younger, more talented player who happens to have a skill set better fit for his offense. Why is that? How do we make the leap to NIL? And where's your proof of that? What evidence do you have of that? Please provide it. It's supposed to be in... No, you look foolish right now, I want to read you guys a quote from Glenn bro. Smith, one of the Dallas Cowboys offensive assistant coaches. What's and good, a guy who's just been paying attention to Quinn Ewers since he's been in high school. And I want you guys to tell mm -hmm. me if this quote just, I want to see if it just ex exudes confidence. Glenn Smith said, Quinn Ewers has an incredible ability to put the nose of the football in tight windows from different arm angles without having to set his feet. I can't speak about his football IQ or his ability to process information in Steve Sarkeesian's offense or how he relates to his teammates and all of that. But from a pure arm talent and ability to deliver the football standpoint, Ewers is special and can do a lot of things that Mahomes does in terms of getting the nose of the football into tight windows from different arm slots without having to set his feet. So pretty much what Glenn Smith is saying, which pretty much everybody who's been hyping up Quinn Ewers has been saying is, the kid can throw the ball and he can do a lot of stuff with just throwing the ball. Yep. But when it comes to actually like playing quarterback, He's kind of up in the air still. Being able to play quarterback at as high of a level that Texas does is more than just being able... Hold up. First off, Glenn Smith didn't say that. Glenn Smith astutely said, I can't speak to that in terms of his football IQ and ability to process information in Steve Sarkeesian's offense. That's what, you know, intelligent, mature people do. If they're they don't have information about something, they don't have the the details, or you know, you can, it's okay to say I don't know. What Glenn Smith is doing, and like you said, he's followed him through his high school career, is profiled his physical traits and his talent. Uh, so you have to understand. He's just saying I can't speak to that. That's not a positive or a negative. Sharp sports. Come on, man. Come on. Back at as high of a level that Texas does is more than just being able to throw the ball from different arm angles and just make flashy passes. You actually need to be able to break down defenses, understand what you're looking at, being able to process both pre-snap and post-snap defensive structures, being able to go through your progressions. It's not just being able to throw the ball 80 yards. I don't understand what's so hard to understand about that. Yes, Hudson Card might... You don't understand a lot of things, brother. I can tell by this video. And... Why is it difficult to understand that just because you have that in your bag doesn't mean you can't do all the traditional quarterback things or continue to get de develop and improve your craft? Again, he's going to be a young freshman quarterback, first time starter. We have him every time, every year in college football, by the way, uh, whether they're super talented or whether it's somebody who, 
you know, came came on to campus and just took off right away. That was unexpected. We have new starters, freshman starters, every year in college football that have to go through this process. Why is it now with Quinn Ewers, who has been so highly touted by people like yourself and some of the recent, you know, content you've made and 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 proclaiming him called him a you called him the next Aaron Rodgers when he was a sophomore in high school now all of a sudden he's you know this big arm goof that isn't able to be cerebral and process anything where are we going with this sharp sports not be able to throw the ball Seventy-five yards, but he can understand. And he That'd be awesome. Right reason. But it's not like he's, he's got not a, bad a long arm snapper. Either. I mean, <laughs> Hudson Carr is the number four quarterback in this class, and here are the three quarterbacks ahead of him: Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, and D.J. Uyunglele. He was number four behind those three guys, and he's doing a phenomenal job of progressing in the three years that he has been at Texas. I want you guys to. So, are you gonna make a video when Cade Klubnik? Eventually passes DJ because he's been there longer and, you know, whatever the case is you're trying to make for Hudson Carter, you going to have that same energy for Cade Klubnik, another highly touted, very talented freshman, top of his class in 2022. Are we going to do the same thing there? Or is this energy and slander only reserved for Quinn Ewers? Seriously, go back and watch Texas. into his throws and he's driving through his throws even on the throws that he did miss the areas that he was missing were great areas he wasn't putting the ball in danger much improved Quinn Ewers he just stands there and he all he does is just all arm all he does everything is all arm his foot uh, how Glenn Smith said he could throw the ball from all type of arm angles without setting his feet okay that's not supposed to be your default your default is supposed to be I got my feet underneath me and then when I need to I can make that throw that off schedule throw we got the cherry pick deep. clips y'all back and looking at Texas spring game Quinn Ewers was missing very simple throws simply because he doesn't set Wait, his feet where's He's constantly where trying to aim the ball with his arm where where are all the where so so where are the positive Quinn Ewers throws because there were a lot of them and he made a lot of high level collegiate and NFL throws in that spring game and I know you saw it but now we're, we're and this is why I said you're being disingenuous right and and, and not even you know I, whether it's confirmation bias whatever this is whatever whatever you're doing uh this ain't it all right because you want to cherry pick some inconsistent reps from a freshman quarterback go off but I can tell you this and I'll say it again and I'll I don't mind repeating myself. If you have two guys that are close and the coach decides to pick the guy with the higher ceiling that is a better fit for his offense and they're already close, then why are we having this whole conversation right now? Why is this so crazy to you? And this is where this is where Texas fans just, just can't win. Because had Hudson Card won this job, y'all be calling Quinn Ewers Tate Martell. Y'all be saying he's a bus. He stole the money. All this type of stuff. Now we pushing the money and he's throwing from arm angles that unnecessarily and all this type of stuff. And yeah, he has mechanical things to fix, just like Patrick Mahomes had mechanical things to fix at Texas Tech. Right? Everybody's journey is a little bit different. But Quinn Ewers' talent level allows him to do certain things that a lot of other quarterbacks do not have the capability of doing. Which leads to inconsistency, which leads to interceptions on very, very easy passes. And every now and again, when he really just lets, gets to let the ball go, that's when it's like, oh, but you see, he can throw the ball 60 yards and hit a pose down the field. Yeah, that, that's easy. Anybody can do that. Can you make, what? Can you make that 30-yard in route in between, what? like, beneath what? the safety of the linebacker? Bro, make, bro, stop. Bro, stop. Anybody can make if anybody can make the the sixty yard post route, Casey Thompson would still be the starting quarterback at Texas. If anybody could do that, Hudson Card wouldn't be fighting for a job and 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 losing out to Quinn Ewers in his third year in the program and sucking year under Steve Sarkeesian. If anybody could do that, you're acting as if you don't, you see NFL quarterbacks, the whole league, they everybody has 
a starter that is able to rip the ball and push the ball downfield. They may be able to see that read or see that deep post or read that middle safety. But come on now, bro. Listen to what you're saying. Anybody can do that. Knock it off. You, We watched that big play to Nair and, and the countless big plays that Quinn Uris has had, whether it's off-platform or or where he's able to come off play action or step up into the pocket and rip the football down the field, stepping into his throw. We have seen it all from Quinn Ewers. If you are paying attention and have two eyes watching his tape, it's not that deep. And to the point about the 30 yard in route, you know, Larry and the ball foot, you know, what, as if that's all of a sudden, you know, a, a, a throw or a route that people are just running is, is crazy within itself. But, to entertain this ridiculous route, layering the ball 30 yards downfield between a linebacker and a safety. You just put up a quote from Glenn Smith saying that the boy is good at put, making tight window throws. So which one is it, Sharp Sports? You just told us that the boy is good at making tight window throws per Glenn Smith, the quote that you use from the scout. So are we only using things and cherry picking Parts of his quote to use for your argument, or are we going to look at everything he said within the entire context? You tell me. Make that throw. Can you make the, the timing throw where the 10 yard stop is throwing it with anticipation? I don't think Clint Ewers can do that. If what? it's not a wide open throw, every now and again he might be able to fit the ball into a tight window. <laughs> got him. We fucking got him. Right where we want. He looks, just taking his step backs. Just nice progression through it. Steps up, feet nice, like he just, like, that throw is so clean. He puts just the right amount of, of force on that front foot, leaves it, leaves it up tall so his receiver can go up and go get it. Nice throwing motion, like, yo. Sophomore's mechanics don't be like this. Like, do you see the touch that he's putting on this ball? Like, he's just barely moving his arm and just, delivering a strike and he's already got the prototypical size i mean he's already 6'3 basically 200 this dude is like joe cool out here he is just he looks so com comfortable in the pocket there you go he's okay he's got he got some arm he got some arm talent though to be able to get the ball to the outside for me this this dude so like I'm telling you guys, sophomores don't throw the ball like this. Like, first off, look at the anticipation that he, he's already winding up to throw, and this dude's barely getting out of his break. This is this is great anticipation. He's throwing it into a very tight window, and he 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 doesn't like he doesn't rifle balls in. I've, I've seen he just likes to just float it right into the little pocket, leaves it up high so his receiver can go make a play on it. Like his ball placement is so money. I mean, when he needs to, though, he can put some velocity on the ball. I like his footwork, too. He's not, like, jumping. Like, he's not, like, skipping um, steps in his drop back. He's really making sure to take, like, if it's a three-step drop back, he takes a three-step drop back, and then he, step, he, he climbs up into the pocket. Like, he does a really good job with that. Like, that's normally the last thing that quarterbacks develop in high school is good footwork. Normally, they're just all arm talent, especially at this. Get off of me! Especially at this stage in his career. Like, I mean, this is this was his first full year as, as a starter. Leads his team to the third best team in, in Texas. Throws 4,000 yards. It only has three picks. Like, this dude completed 72% of his, of his passes. Like, this might be the next Joe Burrow right here. Bro, go look at the quote you put on your own video. What am I watching? Sharp Sports. What are you talking about? You just you said you don't think he can do that. So he has he doesn't have the ability to learn, or you haven't seen it. Like so, so, so you have an issue then. With the entire scouting community, the you know all the folks that make Q, Quinn Ewers a perfect rating, you know two four seven on three rivals ESPN, everybody in the community, yourself, again, sophomore year comparing him to Aaron Rodgers, 
You've made content comparing him to Joe Burrow. You've made content comparing him to Patrick Mahomes as well. So, you know, it's time to bring the receipts there. Well, all righty, yo, Quinn, you are hands down one of the, if not the best sophomore quarterbacks in the country. To me, you have a different skill set of intangibles than most of the other five-star and four-star quarterbacks that I cover. Most of the four and five-star quarterbacks have a crazy big arm. They can make all the deep ball throws, but they lack in their footwork and they can use some help in their mechanics and in the in throwing mechanics. You, on the other hand, you throw a very catchable ball. You have really solid footwork. You can make guys miss as, a, as like a dual, a dual threat option. But bro, just the anticipation that you're able to throw on passes, the touch that you have on passes at such a young age, that's what's, that's what's gonna separate you come your junior and senior year once the ranking system really starts being more of a factor. Cause bro, like as a former receiver, I can tell you right now, your receivers love you because you don't always try and just rifle the ball in there. Like you make sure to give them the best and easiest ball to catch possible. But you also made content pushing him over CJ Stroud last year when they lost to Oregon. So we can do we can do that, bro. However, losing to Oregon last week did not help CJ Stroud's case out at all. So my Buckeye fans, y'all kind of got this quarterback in that quarterback room who, I mean, he kind of goes by the name of uh, Quinn Ewers. You, you might have heard of him. Do you think he might be seeing some playing time here soon? Today I want to go back and take a look at Queen Ears High School highlight tape because obviously we only have his junior year tape because he skipped out on his senior year to go straight to uh, go straight to college. And uh, I, I just wanted to see, hey, potentially what kind of quarterback could we be seeing in the very near future for the Buckeyes if CJ Stroud not continues to struggle, because I'm not gonna say that he's struggling right now, but just if he if he doesn't live up to expectations. Quinn Ewers might be, he might be shaking the boat a little bit out there. So let's jump straight into Quinn Ewers' highlight tape and see what Ohio State's future QB1 is looking like on the field. Three, two, one. Psh. All right, Buckeye fans, let's see what your future QB1's looking like on the field. Hey, yo, I want you guys to comment down below right now. If you had it your way, would you guys want Quinn Ewers? Ooh, I'm just like, that's a dot, bro. Like, that's a dot and a laser. Like, look at how far he throws this. Throws this from like the 52 to the five, just like lowing on a rope. Like that is, that's a, that's so money. Um, Because again, you're entitled to your opinion, you're entitled to be wrong. But when we start pushing a misinformation and you start acting as though you've always been off the bandwagon and you don't feel this way at all and questioning, you know, people's abilities when it's clear as day, and then using misinformation like he was, you know, wildly outperformed by by Hudson Card and wasn't close to him in the spring game, you know, just telling all sorts of of, of lies on here. I mean, I don't know how else to categorize this. But nine times out of ten, when he tries to pick that ball into a tight window, it's going to lead to a pick or a pass break. I'm just going to come out and say it: the Quinn Ewers hype train, at least for this year, going into. I'm not going to just completely write the kid off. But at You've least been writing him off year, the whole video. He is not real. He is not as good of a quarterback as everybody is painting him out to be. You, and with all the pressure help. that he has to be you the had a face brush. of Texas football <laughs> to bring them. Bro, you had a paintbrush when you made that content. You, you're part of the problem. That doesn't exist, but you're part of it. From the 5-7 and seven season that they had last year to bringing them to supposed to be national championship contenders. I mean, he's already got Heisman hype around him. He hasn't We're national him. championship oh, contenders? Yeah. I wasn't aware of that either. See, this is part of, this is this is again, Texas fans. So we we're over here preparing for this, you know, youth movement that's going on. We're probably, you know, the, there's there's a good chance we could start seven to open the season, by the way, you could start seven guys on offense who are freshman or sophomore players. And we're coming off a of five and seven season, as everybody loves to say. Yet now we're high, you know, Queen Years is up for the Heisman and, and and we're national championship contenders. Now the Heisman thing, you know, there is precedent set for first year players, i.e. the guy he was backing up last year, uh, CJ Stroud, who was a first year starter, hadn't thrown a pass yet until last season, and finished as a Heisman finalist. You know, Jameis Winston, Johnny Manziel, there's 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 a lot of recent examples in college football of redshirt freshmen in particular 
you know, being in that conversation. So I don't think that's far-fetched, especially playing in a Steve Sarkeesian offense. But in terms of the win-loss record and all those type of things, um, that's – I I don't even know where that's coming from. We, I, I mean, come on, man. We're not even ranked in the AP poll. So where, where are we going with this? We're, we're mid-tier in the coaches poll. What are we talking about, Sharp Sports? Let me know. At any level in college – There's always the pressure when you're the starting Everybody quarterback at Texas. Whoa, 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 So, bro, you just said, hold on, let me back up. You just said he knows he shouldn't be the starting quarterback? Does Quinn Ewers confide in you, Sharp Sports? You got the direct line? You his therapist? Who are you? Huh? Where or Did you just make that shit up, too? Like you've been making up half the shit in this video. And everybody knows. No, you don't know. Not everybody. You don't know. Because he has so much hype. He has so much NIL money behind him. He's, he's supposed to be the, he was supposed to step Stop in. Stop pocket and watching. Down when the Texas job. And Stop he pocket watching that, out here. Now he's got to constantly be looking over his shoulder because he knows that Hudson Card is right there. And if he gets the chance to start, I don't think Hudson Card is going to let it go. I would not be surprised if at some point during the season, Hudson Card ends up taking over the starting job for Quinn Ewers. I mean, please don't forget that... I wouldn't be surprised if you deleted this video or had to come back and eat so much crow. It's not even funny. So, you know, speaking of surprise, again, I'm not saying that you're not entitled to feel some type of way or think Quinn Ewers is going to come along slowly or might struggle early or you wanted or you thought Hudson Carr was a better fit for Texas. That's that's not my beef with you. But when we start pulling at the NIL crap, and all of these other, you know, reasons and, and the player doesn't believe he should be the starter, you are making things up. You are literally making things up. Quinn Ewers reclassified. He's technically going into his true freshman year mm -hmm. age-wise. Texas fans, I'm sorry to say it. I'm going to stand on this. Quinn Ewers is not the guy, at least for this year, but he is just simply not the guy. Hudson Card is going to give you your best chance of winning multiple games this year. With Quinn Ewers, I see him throwing a lot of picks. As soon as he starts throwing picks, it's going to go downhill from there. And if Hudson Card steps in and that messes with Quinn Ewers' confidence, it, it could get ugly. Well, young guys throw picks. That's number one. Number two, if... Quinn's confidence is impacted by that, then, you know, hey, maybe you have a point there. He's not the guy we thought he was. However, to suggest that, you know, his, he's that that's all he is. You, so you're also, then you need to be willing to go further and say, Steve Sarkeesian's not doing his job. You need to go further and qualify what the context of the quarterback and coach situation is. Uh, we know, you know, as recently as, you know, Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay or Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid or Ryan Day and C.J. Stroud. Some of these relationships do matter. What system these guys are playing in, right? How much is on their plate? Have, have we had any of those conversations or are we just acting like everything win-loss wise is only on Quinn Ewers' shoulders and there's no guidance or help from anybody else on this football team or on this coaching staff. Really quickly. Comment down below what do you guys think about this. I'm personally, I was never really a big on the Quinn Ewers hype train. Everybody, Cap. Again, That's everybody Cap. is lost. That's Cap. Patrick Mahomes became Patrick Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. No bullshit, bro. We got you. I mean, you you put yourself out there in 4K to be fair. So don't don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. You put you put that stuff out there about him being Aaron Rodgers and Joe Burrow and Mahomes and all these other people. Okay. So don't say that you weren't on the hype train, bro. Everybody has lost their mind when it comes to quarterback evaluation. People act no, no, like no, if people McKay have gotten throw the better yards, with quarterback evaluations over the recent years, in my opinion. You simply cannot. Go out there, go find the quarterback who knows how to break down defenses, can make the on-time, just simple throws. And if you can go out there and you can go find your project quarterback and you can turn it. So my guy wants a game manager then. You want that cute little 
game manager. Hey, man, you know, Stetson Bennett just won a national championship. So if you prefer to have that, I hope you got the Georgia defense and all the five-star talent to go with that guy. But for the rest of us in college football that are looking for the guy that can make it happen, that can do more, or the more he can do, the more we can do offensively as a team, you know, we'll, we'll continue on that path. Well, how about we agree to disagree there? You can go with your, you know, your, your, your game managing, let's get the first down type quarterback. Let's do that. Something cool. Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Go get the quarterback that's going to give you the best chance of getting first downs, not the quarterback who's going to have to give you the best chance of throwing the 80-yard bomb every single play. But at the end of the day, with how much NIL money is behind him and with how much hype is behind him, all Stop pocket Texas watching. Guys, yeah, and Quinn, Quinn y'all trust. Y'all, hey. All I say is that if he starts messing up, don't immediately put him to the fire because y'all were the ones that hyped him. And all I'm going to say is when he starts balling, I need to see you on here, bro. And I need to see you making content that's actually fair and accurate to the situation. I need to see you saying, hey, I got that wrong and I was pushing some bullshit. All right, let's keep it a buck out here, Sharp Sports. This is unacceptable content, brother. This is unacceptable content. You can make your point and get to it without having to push cap. Oh, with that being said, leave us a little like, hit that subscribe button. We're on the way to 3,000 subscribers. Love and appreciate all y'all. I will catch you guys in the next video. Ciao. Hope you make it to 300,000 subscribers, brother. That's a monumental uh, achievement. What you've done so far is an achievement. Again, my criticism and my issue with you is with this particular topic, this video, and quite frankly, this player, uh, because I feel like, you know, you've produced content in the past that is completely opposite. And there's been no type of segue or information where you're like, hey, you know what, upon further review, I don't feel this way about this player anymore, or upon, you know, these particular data points, you've provided us none of that. Uh, and now we have a hit piece we got to respond to, courtesy of you. So we had to go ahead and <laughs> get through that with Sharp Sports. Brutal watch, but it needed to be addressed. And when you come after QB1, you know, we have to do what's right, right? So, you know, in the regards to Quinn Ewers, he earned the job fair and square. He earned the job with this play on the field. Steve Sarkeesian, best fit for the offense. Steve Sarkeesian being the eye of what he you know, understanding what he wants, far more qualified than Sharp, myself, anybody else watching this video. It's Steve's decision. And um, in my opinion, he's making the right call here. But, you know, regardless of how you feel, if you have, you know, people have opinions. I'm not saying you have to like Quinn Ewers or have to acknowledge anything. But when you are on record saying the things that you said and then, you know, switch up like that, we got to call it out. And so, when we look at what was said about the NIL stuff, very much out of bounds, especially unfounded. When we look at the tape stuff and Hudson Card, you know, clearly outperforming Quinn Ewers and, you know, false practice narratives or wherever the information is coming from, we need to cast out that information as quickly as possible, especially with the amount of people that see content on YouTube and then start running with things because they have been misinformed. So uh, that's my job and my responsibility here, especially as a Texas fan since you called on us. Uh, like I said at the beginning, here we are. Now, um, make sure you guys subscribe and, and like my video and, you know, appreciate y'all helping grow the channel. Sharp Sports, if you ever want to rap, man, I'm here. I'm not looking for, for you know, I'm sure you probably hate me at this point. That's perfectly fine. I'm just keeping it a buck with you. Uh, but if you ever want to rap, let's do it. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, have any, uh, you know, beef or anything like that with, with, with brothers out here. We just needed to acknowledge um, the BS that was put out uh, by you. So anyway, hit the sponsor, BUSR, BUSR.com slash fanatic. Official sponsor, official sports, but official betting partner of Fanatic Perspective. Hit that sports 100 FP promo code. Take advantage, 100% free play match on all initial deposits on BSR. Within the first 24 hours, we have football this weekend. 
We have NFL right around the corner. So much to take advantage of on BSR. Best customer service 24-7 in the business. Guys, remember, horns always up.